Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Bartholomew the Apostle Church. We are gathered today to celebrate the sacred liturgy for the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and share a greeting with one another. Our presider is Father David, assisted by Deacon Matthew Gonzalez. Our entrance hymn is All Are Welcome. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true where all god's children dare to seek to dream god's reign anew here the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of god's grace here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Good evening. Welcome. So please be seated for just a minute. I just want to take the opportunity to welcome Deacon Matthew Gonzalez uh, to our parish here at St. Bartholomew. Uh, deacon Matt was ordained a transitional deacon uh, at the end of May, just a few weeks ago, right? Just a few weeks ago. And uh, hopefully will be ordained a priest uh, next May. Um, so I asked if he would just introduce himself, say a few words, but uh, and notice he has black hair. You know, I had that hair uh, when I was his age. I even brought out a picture to show him. My hair was jet black when I was uh, ordained. So please join me in welcoming uh, Deacon Matt. Good evening, everyone. It's so good to be here with all of you and finally meet you. Uh, I've been praying for you so much these past couple of weeks. Uh, and just from the first moment that I stepped here at St. Bartholomew's, meeting Father John, meeting some of the staff, meeting Father David, I felt like I came to another home. I felt like I'm really meeting my new family here. I have felt so welcomed. You know, I was really thinking about the name of this parish because I think the name of your first parish assignment has a lot to do with the mission that God is asking you to embark on. So I'm thinking, okay, St. Bartholomew's, what connection is there with me? And the first thing that came to mind was, I don't really know anything about St. Bartholomew. <laughs> but what I do know is that St. Bartholomew is one of the 12 apostles. So right away I thought of, well, my name is Matthew. He's also one of the 12. So I was just thinking, what was the first call that Jesus made to his apostles? The first call that he, he made to them was just to be with him. So that's my desire with you all, is just to share in the presence of Jesus Christ with you in his love, uh, and just to serve you in whatever capacity that I can, in whatever way God is asking me to throughout this year. I'm sure I'm going to learn from a lot of you here. I'm going to receive so much love from all of you, but I can't wait to share that love of Jesus with you. So thank you for the welcome, and I can't wait to begin this journey with you all. God bless you.
Thank you, Matthew, for being here. See, they do make them young. Please stand. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Friends, so that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strengthen strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. to get 
it good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn, and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They are that planted in the house of the Lord, shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age, vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous. Although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise at night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He, he knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to understand it. Without parables he did not speak to them, 
but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A mother remarked, When I think of perspective, I'm often reminded of a conversation between me and my son in the summer he turned four. That spring, Mark, my son, had asked for a spot in the family garden to call his own. He turned the soil, broke the clumps, and planted his favorite vegetable, corn. So toward the middle of July, Mark was concerned that his corn was not growing fast enough. I tried to reassure him that the corn was going just fine by quoting him a familiar benchmark used by farmers, knee high by the 4th of July. Well, my son, she continued, came with this retort, my knees or yours, my knees or yours. You know, the famous spiritual author, Henry Nowen, he recounts the first meeting he had with Mother Teresa of Calcutta in this way. He writes, I had the opportunity to meet Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I was struggling with many things at the time and decided to use this occasion to ask Mother Teresa's advice. So as soon as we sat down, I started explaining all my problems and all my difficulties, trying to convince her of how complicated it all was. Well, after about 10 minutes of elaborating, I finally became quiet. Mother Teresa looked at me and quietly said, Well, when you spend one hour a day adoring the Lord in prayer and never do anything which you know is wrong, you'll be fine. Well, at that moment, Mother Teresa's simple, her simple advice, it, it punctured his big balloon of complex self-complaints and pointed him far beyond himself to the place of real healing. I mean, reflecting on this brief but decisive encounter, Henry realized that he had raised the question from below and that she had given an answer from above. So at first, her answer didn't seem to fit his question. But then he began to see that her answer came from God's place and not from a place of his complaints. You know, it's true that in our lives, we're inundated with urgent questions. I mean, how am I going to find joy and happiness? What is the right way of living? What am I to do with my life? Whom shall I marry? Where shall I live? What gifts do I have to share? What do I do with my loneliness? Why am I so needy for affection, approval, and power? How can I overcome my fears, my shame, my addictions, and my sense of inadequacy and failure? Friends, we all have questions throughout our lives, especially in the tough moments. But I think that most of the time we respond to these questions from below with answers from below. You know, we may be fixed in our world, in our particular situation, limiting our vision to what is immediately around us. What we can see, what we can hear, what we can touch, what we know. And the result is often more confusion. You know, Henry, at the time of his encounter with Mother Teresa, he was struggling with many of these same questions. He learned something that he already knew, but wasn't living out. His perspective changed from below to above. He began seeking answers from above to his questions that were coming from below. 
You see, friends, when we begin to see things from God's place above, well, a whole new world opens up for us with tons of possibilities and an an enormous amount of hope. And I think that's what our readings are focusing on today. For example, in our first reading, right, from the prophet Ezekiel, God's people, the people of Israel, I mean, they're living probably in the worst time of Israel's history. Ezekiel's oracle seemed hopelessly optimistic and out of touch considering with what the people were going through at the time. I mean, his prophecy comes from that time in history where Jerusalem's king and the leading citizens of Israel were captured by the Babylonians and they were taken to Babylon as slaves. The great Davidic monarchy seemed lost and everything was in ruins. To Israel's questions from below, the prophet Ezekiel, he gives an answer of hope from above. God will preserve the dynasty of David and it will grow once more, he reminds them. Well, this answer from above, it gives his people courage as they patiently await God to act on their behalf. So Ezekiel, he realized that answers from above would put the life of the people and whatever situation they were living in, it would give them perspective. And perspective helped them to have a better sense of what they were able to do and not do. What's within their control and what's out of their control? In our gospel, Jesus does the same thing when he gives us two special parables. In the first parable, a farmer is scattering seed on good soil. Having done the sowing, all he can do is attend to other things. While the seed takes over and does its thing, and the crops are ready for harvest, there's not much that the farmer can do. So in this parable, the farmer, he, he does not know how it all happens, right? Between his actions of sowing the seed and harvesting the crop, nature comes in and it takes, it takes its lead. Nature comes in and it does what he can't understand. But to the farmer, that's totally okay because he knows that God is working, even when he can't see it. And in the second parable, Jesus reminds us that God can be at work in surprising ways and places. You know, there's a stark contrast between the tiny mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds, and this large shrub that it grows into. Insignificant beginnings can lead to a wonderful result if we but persevere. Friends, that's what the kingdom of God is like. That's what Jesus is getting at. It often is expressed initially in what is small and seemingly insignificant. So too, it's our lives. We can feel that our own faith is insignificant, as small as a mustard seed, barely hanging on, And as such, we may forget to seek answers from above. Even so, Jesus is reminding us to see things from a different perspective while assuring us that the Holy Spirit is working in us, is working through us, encouraging us. So friends, you know the little boy Mark in the story that I began with, he was willing to determine the readiness of his precious crop by using his own measure the height of his knees rather than those of his mom. Who knew better? His mom. Well, we often fall into the same trap, don't we? From below, our faith can appear as small as a mustard seed. But from above, such faith is enough for the Lord to do the work that he needs to do. From below, Our various efforts can seem to bear very insignificant results. Maybe a friendly gesture towards someone in trouble. No big deal. A welcoming smile for someone who's alone. Sure, you can do that. 
a sign of closeness for someone in despair, a little ray of joy for someone in distress, a willingness to concede to an unknown result, a gift of the benefit of the doubt when pride is pricking you. You know, but from above, we can believe that the final harvest from those elf efforts will be abundant. So friends, the next time you ask a question from below, may you seek the answer from above and watch your perspective change. Together, friends, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, assured by the scriptures that even the smallest seed of faith will come to fruition, we confidently offer our prayers for our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, that the word of God in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist, may strengthen and inspire us to sow the seeds of faith throughout our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the graduating class of St. Bartholomew Academy and all graduates, may they face a future filled with promise and find fulfillment and joy as they move on to the next stage of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the tender shoots in our midst, the young, those new to the faith, newly married couples, and those beginning their ministry or profession, that God will give them abundant growth and guide them to maturity of faith and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that despite political differences, People may work together for peace, the protection of the vulnerable, and the healing of divisions in our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who suffer illness of mind or body, that our Heavenly Father may give them comfort, healing, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who have left this life, May they now rest secure in the loving arms of God. We remember especially Hal Enoch, Nancy Mara, and Bob Siesla. We pray to the Lord. God of all creation, who nurtures and cares for us at every stage of life, hear the prayers we offer today. 
May the work of our hands and our lives bear fruit so that your holy name may be glorified for all time. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As grains of wheat are gathered in, we've come together. From lives apart, we bring our hearts to make one Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your, your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good, good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. 
heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
many and great are seeds upon the field. The hand sows, the seeds grow. Take now and eat the covenant fulfilled, the bread of promise and love. sharing of our lives with one and all. Many and great are voices of despair. The Our cup of blessing we share. The wheat grows from springtime to fall. The wine flows. In Christ we recall the sharing of our in the sand the sun glows the wind blows take now and spread the word to every land the word of goodness and Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thy vast 
Oh 